Oh, we're live. What's up, guys? Good evening. Good evening, Vanilla Pat. How are you, sir? Good, sir. Well, let me Good, pull down my banner, I guess. What's up, guys? We're live. Um, yeah, we're here today to uh, talk about the criminal record that uh, Jose Maria De Castro does not have, right? Very true, Ed. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ed2276 Ed says this ought to be a very short stream. As Chili says, he has zero criminal record from hey, which to read. He said, how was that for uh, you know, sarcasm, we'll say. It was good. It was Michael. good. Um, thank you. Okay, Dutch Doyle, thank you for that. Uh, guys, so I usually don't do this whole thing, not very often, but what I'm going to do is at the top, of the chat, there is a message pinned. There is a link on that for a PayPal.me account. Um, that is going to be the fund in which we draw from um, to pay for these public records requests, which are piling up and becoming quite pricey uh, really quickly. So uh, although I do appreciate any super chats that come in, you're never obligated to donate. If you do, uh, it would be preferable if you Hit that, uh, hit that link instead of Super Chats this evening, just because we are trying to keep these public records requests rolling. It is all over the country, all over the state. Um, we've had to pick up some new subscription services to, you know, pick up some of these records. It has just been ext extensive. So, yeah. Um, Courtney Dobbs says the other night he said that he's never pled guilty to anything. Oh, that's, that's not honest. That's just not. So we're going to read through. Uh, the first thing I want to do, though, is just pull this up right here so that we can hear in um, Chili's own words what he thinks about this whole thing right here. Oh, mass hole report just blocked that fool. Just, just, uh, just, just, just block him. Mass hole report. Ooh, I'm so afraid of you, mass hole. You're so scared. I'm so scared. And, you know, I'm so scared. I'm so scared of you. I'm so scared. <laughs> you can't beat me up. You can't kill me. You can't beat me in court. You can't beat me in a debate. I won't debate you because I don't debate bootlickers. I did a debate with Skeptic a few months ago, a couple months ago. I wish I hadn't done it. But I don't really care. I don't care what you think. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you drudge up about my past. I'll talk about anything when it's time. When I'm running for governor of Ohio, if the people of the the elect if the if the people who are part of the electorate want to know questions and answers about my past at that time I'll answer them but I have no criminal record I have no domestic violence I have no assaults I have no probation violations it's all lies so so you guys don't get caught up in it don't don't let people don't don't let people you know steer you the wrong way we need to stay focused on transparency on change on Right. No criminal records. So this is weird. So what we have are some records here from the uh, county of Clackamas, o Oregon. Um, as we can see at the top here, is this big enough? Can we, can we read this or should I? I guess I'll I'll zoom in is what I'll do. Hold on. Can you, can you hear me zoom okay in. this time? Yeah. All right. Good. All right. So we're just going to zoom in here so that we can see that this is the state of Oregon as the plaintiff. The defendant is Jose Maria de Castro, date of birth 9-11-1974. That's you, bro. That's you. It's nobody else. Um, and this is <laughs> John Golf. <laughs> this is uh this is a um 1994 offense giving false information to a police officer. So one question that I would posit, Chili, um, as you don't care, that's why you bring us up, is uh when you run for governor of Ohio. What name are you going to do it under? Because you've given the police several false names in your past. Uh, so are you going to be uh, running as Jose Maria de Castro? Or are you going to be running as one of these al uh, aliases? So we can see here. And guys, as always, I'm going to put up a Dropbox with all the documents um, at the end of this broadcast. So you can peruse them at your own leisure. Um, one thing that I've seen happen a couple times with this that actually really upsets me is I'm never going to put public records behind a paywall. This is public information. It's your information to have as you want it. I'm never going to uh, make you pay for that. That would be ridiculous. So here we go. We can see that he's had warrants come up for this too, because he just doesn't show up for court. <laughs> so there's that. Um, so here we have, 
we're going to get to the facts here. This is a motion to disqualify the judge um, that was uh, filed by the deputy district attorney. I still don't fully understand why that's happening. There's a lot of questions that come up as we go through these records, uh, which is why I'm really aggressively trying to keep the public records requests rolling here. Uh, Cause I just don't fully understand what we're looking at all the time here, as far as why things happen the way that he did. One thing I'm really concerned about too, and kind of confused and would like to, uh, you know, be able to figure out an answer for is we're going to see in these that um, Jose gave false names to the police during relatively minor traffic stops. You know, it's not like they pulled him over in the car, pulled him out of the car and he had a kilo of cocaine or something in there. So it's just a little bit confusing to me as to why he's giving fake names on these relatively, you know, minor stops. One of two things that I can think of off the top of my head, either he actually is a pathological liar and this is something that is deeply, deeply wrong with him, some sort of, you know, pathological issue or or if it's not like some sort of congenital issue, um, he's ha running from something that we haven't found yet. All right. So yeah, that seems to be more like the second thing, right? I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Don't know. Yeah. It doesn't make a lot of sense why you would lie um, and give them a fake name on these things. So here we go. A report filed by Deputy Steele of the Clackamas County Sheriff's Office relates that on April 1st, 1994, he stopped a vehicle that was displaying a stolen license plate on the rear of the vehicle. He stopped the vehicle on Southwest Roosevelt Avenue in Clackamas County, State of Oregon. During that contact, the driver of the vehicle told Deputy Steele that his name was Matthew Lee Cornelius. Now, Cornelius, I just want to point out, is his mother's maiden name. So this is going to tie back in. This really kind of kills the plausible deniability that, no, it wasn't me. That is literally his mother's maiden name. So he used a fake name using his mother's maiden name. That's what he did. And then he lived on Causey Loop in Portland, Oregon. About two months later, Deputy Rush received an anonymous call giving him information that Mr. Cornelius had been using a false name. Upon further investigation, Deputy Rush found that this information was correct. He went to the location where he, where he had been told that the driver of the vehicle was staying and saw that it was the same person who had earlier identified himself as Matthew Cornelius. This person was identified as the defendant, Jose Maria um, de Castro with an address of 17897 Peter Sheen Road, Way, Oregon City. Based on the foregoing, I have probable cause to believe that the defendant has committed the crime of giving false information to a police officer in Clackamas County, Oregon, and make this affidavit in support of state's motion for an arrest warrant. All right, here we have right here. And this was notarized. It's official. Like This is not something that we just randomly found on the internet. This is something that I paid money to get from the courts. Thank you very much, Jose. Right here, this is a uh, letter that they sent to Mr. DeCastro. This is to inform you that a complaint has been filed in district court charging you with giving false information to a police officer. Please be advised that the time for arraignment has been set for Thursday, July 14th, 1994 at 3 o'clock p.m. in room 304, whoops, of the Clackamas County Courthouse in Oregon City, Oregon. If no appearance is made at that time, it will be necessary to issue a warrant for your arrest. Okay. And then what we're looking at here is that several years later, um, they made a motion to quash and dismiss the uh, warrant because after several years, they just couldn't freaking find him. So essentially he dipped out. They couldn't find him um, as a, you know, sort of a, a mechanism of house cleaning. They quashed and just got rid of it altogether. Didn't think that it was worth finding him, you know, not worth the effort. So that is one charge. Matthew Lee Cornelius. Uh, I mean, yeah. So does he think because it's so far back, it doesn't count? Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. So Archangel for Truth, I do understand that uh, Mr. Cornelius or DeCastro, whichever he's going by these days, is making the claim that I was arrested for siphoning gas. Um, I was never arrested for siphoning gas. I would uh, challenge you to go pull the public record of that arrest. It was very, very easy for me to pull his. So if this does exist, particularly where he says it was this year, um, with it being so recent, like go ahead and find it. You can read it out on one of your streams. He can run it, read it out on one of his. It doesn't exist. It's a defamatory claim. Oh, thank you. I'm actually not wearing any makeup and I'm a mess today. Thanks. All right, let's go to the next one, shall we? 
it's actually just like incomprehensible to me that uh you know this uh this continues like this all right so let's see let me make sure that Okay, so that's the same one. Sorry, I know I have a duplicate file in here when I downloaded them. I just downloaded one twice. That's my bad. Okay, so here's another case. Oops, let's pull that up. Stop that screen. We're going to grab up this screen. All right. So this is another one. This is another from 1995. So 1995, he makes another contact with the police, uh, presumably while they're still looking for him. So I guess there's sort of an idea as to why he would be giving a fake name this time, maybe, because he'd already done it once before and didn't want to get caught. Um, so this is the probable cause statement for this uh, particular case. So it said, I, Marianne K. Meany, being first duly sworn on oath, do depose that I am a Clackamas County Deputy District Attorney and make this affidavit in support of the attached motion for arrest warrant. Facts proving probable cause to issue an arrest warrant are contained in the police report of Officer Brian Dale of the Gladstone Police Department. That report reflects on December 31st, 1995. He stopped a vehicle for failing to obey a traffic control device at 99 East and Glen Echo, public highways in Clackamas County, Oregon. Upon contact, the driver identified himself as Chad Mitchell with a date of birth of November 3rd, 1973. The driver indicated that he forgot his license at home in Oregon City. Officer Dale issued the driver a citation under that name. On or about January 12th, 1996, Officer Dale was advised that a person named Chad Mitchell came to the Gladstone Municipal Court to explain that a friend of his, Jose Mario de Castro, used his name during a traffic stop on December 31st, 1995. Officer Dale subsequently contacted Chad Mitchell, and Mr. Mitchell told him that Jose Maria de Castro gave him $20 for his license. So again, this is just kind of in inexplicable. It, it really begs the question of like, why is he doing this? He's now paying people to use their identification um, to hide up what? Attempts to contact Jose Maria de Castro were unsuccessful. Officer Dale was told by former roommates of de Castro that he had left town. So they try to send him another letter. And they tell him that he's got, um, you know, Oh, I'm sorry. No, this is actually a notice, uh, pen dismissal, no action. All right. The court file shows no action for a period of at least one year. You are hereby requested to take appropriate action for the further prosecution or dismissal of this case. So essentially what happens again is he takes off and like, you know, 10 years later, um, they decide that they are going to uh, dismiss and quash it because they can't freaking find him. Um, and right here we can see that they've done that on other defendants as well. So now we're establishing a pattern here. Mr. DeCastro um, regularly gives false information to the police. All right, so let's go to the other one from Clackamas County, shall we? Yoda says, really looking forward to seeing Chile in jail. Yeah. Uh, Chili DeCastro already told us about all his prior arrests. No, Chili DeCastro, as we just heard, is claiming that he doesn't have a uh, criminal record. He is so adamant that he does not have a criminal record that he has threatened me with, uh, you know, legal action for even stating that he has a criminal record, not once, but two times. So which is it, Ar Archangel for Truth? Like, is he, does he have a criminal record? Um, and he's been honest and open about it? Or is it that he doesn't have a criminal record? Because you can't have both at the same time. He's a liar. That's what he is. All right. So let's pull up the next one. All right. So this is his theft charge. And this is a charge that he pled guilty to. 
So this is also from the 90s. And he uh, shoplifted is what happened. So. The above named defendant um, on or about December 6th, 1993, committed the offense of theft in the second degree as follows to it. That said defendant in the county of Clackamas, state of Oregon, on the date alleged, did unlawfully and knowingly commit theft of jeans and a jacket of the total value of $50 or more. This is a uh, defendant being contrary to the statutes in su such case and made provided and against the peace and dignity of the state of Oregon. All right. So he sh shoplifted a jeans and a, uh, jeans and a jacket. Again, they look to disqualify um the judge from this case, which I still don't understand why this is being done, but they did. Uh, we'll find out why. Yeah. So we're going down. We're going down. Yep, we're seeing right here that he was arraigned. He said that he would retain an attorney and that there was a trial date set for 3-21-94. And then right here we see that um, he defaulted. And when he defaulted, a bench warrant was set and his bail was set at $5,000. So he actually skipped out on a shoplifting case where, um, you know, the total value stolen was only $50 or more. So that's a pretty low threshold. And he defaulted on that and a bench a warrant was issued. Okay. He was then bailed out. Oh my gosh, what's going on here? And then we can see that on 6 8 of 94, he pled guilty. Oh no, I'm sorry, that's not him. I don't know why they put the whole docket in this, but they do. So it was 6 1 that he pled guilty. And if we go down below, we can see. That he pled guilty. So. And he certifies there have been no threats, promises, or plea offers made to induce me to plea except for a first offender theft treatment. Okay. And then here we go. Here's another bench warrant. So on 32194, the above named defendant in violation of the terms of release, which would be a probation violation because it's pretrial probation, Sir uh, DeCastro. So when you say I don't have any probation violations, that is untrue. Um, so on 32194, the above named defendant in violation of the terms of release failed to appear as directed at the time set, set for trial six person jury. And here we're looking at the uh, the plea deal here. So he pled guilty and he's sentenced as indicated on page two of the order. So when we go down to page two of the order, he has a sentence suspended probation to the court for 12 months. He needs to obey all laws, attend th the, the program Theft Talk within 60 days, $150 fine, some statute, sa statutory assessments, attorney fees and costs of $255, um, 
And there was a judgment amount of $462 assessed as well. So there's that. And here is the, the probation violation right here that he says that he does not have. Here's another probation violation. This is an official probation violation. So here we go. I, the undersigned, make the following statement upon oath or affirmation. I am a judicial assistant or clerk for the judge who is supervising bench probation in this case. It appears the defendant has violated the conditions of probation by reason of the following. Defendant failed to attend the theft talk class. I will direct you, and this is just for uh, Archangel in particular. I just want to play this again, this minute clip here where he says that he has no criminal record, no probation violations, none of that. And I just want you to really think about what you're saying when you say he's not alone. Oh, mass hole report just block that fool. Just, just, uh, just, just, just block him. Mass hole report. Ooh, I'm so afraid of you, mass hole. You're so scared. I'm so scared. And, you know, I'm so scared. I'm so scared of you. I'm so scared. <laughs> you can't beat me up. You can't kill me. You can't beat me in court. You can't beat me in a debate. I won't debate you because I don't debate bootlickers. I did a debate with Skeptic a few months ago, a couple months ago. I wish I hadn't done it, but I don't really care. I don't care what you think. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you drudge up about my past. I'll talk about anything when it's time. When I'm running for governor of Ohio, if the people of the the elect, if the if the people who are part of the electorate want to know questions and answers about my past at that time i'll answer them but i have no criminal record i have no domestic violence i have no assaults i have no probation violations it's all lies so so you guys don't get caught up in it don't don't let people don't don't let people you know steer you the wrong way we need to stay focused on transparency on change on I guess yep. he doesn't know you do your research. Right, 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 right. <laughs> I mean, that's just like, this is just like the tip of the iceberg here too. Um, I also, I'm kind of confused why he's so focused on only the, um, the criminal aspect of it. Because I believe that his civil record actually is a lot darker just from what I've seen. So I did want to share as we're pulling, we're pulling all of the, um, records on all of these restraining orders that have been taken out against him. We're up to 10 that we have counted. This is 10 separate individuals that have tried and succeeded to get protective orders against Mr. DeCastro. 10. I don't know if I have you. I don't think we've ever seen that before. I've never seen that. <laughs> and we've been doing this a long time. I've never seen somebody with this many restraining orders out on them. It's I've never heard of anybody having that many restraining orders. Right, right, right. At different times for most of his most of his life. It's just really unbelievable. So let's share this right here. And this is going to um this is actually gonna be kind of a doozy. I thought it was pretty uh pretty juicy because it's a twofold thing. It not only talks about the way that he was harassing women, um, but also he was he was squatting in an office building, which again I've never heard of before. Pretty interesting stuff. So this is a um, request for a civil harassment restraining order. It was um, from 2021, so it's extremely recent. Hold on, Let's zoom in here. And we can see here uh, what's going on. All right, so there he is, Jose Maria de Castro, age 40s. This is out of West Hollywood in, um, in California. So she says... I work full time at address. Jose M. De Castro has been squatting at this building for a couple of months, right? Um, on September 20th, 2021, around 3.30 p.m., person in number two, which is Jose, threatened my life. Jesus Christ. Here we go. Mm. All right. And they go on to explain. 
There were several people, about six or seven, in the conference room with door closed, about 10 feet away from my desk. Also, about four realtors working that came out to check on me when Jose de Castro was yelling at me. Person in two, which is Jose, uh, came very upset to my desk because I was showing the vacant office to a potential tenant. Jose M. DeCastro wanted to show the office because he placed a Craigslist ad to rent this office. So when he came to my desk, his demeanor was creepy and scary, and he yelled at me. Dina, I can be a nice guy, but I can be very mean, and if you fuck with me, I'll fuck with you. I told him to get out of my face or I would call the cops. Jose M. DeCastro has yelled at me, accusing me of taking his car keys when I have no access to his belongings. His creepy attitude has me thinking he will hit or hurt me physically. All right. This is just requesting different orders. Person in two has been squatting in this office building. He does not pay rent and he has been harassing other women that work in the building. Why is it showing and, a, a space on Craigslist and trying to rent it out? Yeah, so that's what I, I mean. It, 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 for a space that he doesn't own, nor does he pay right. rent for. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and he actually did later on try to crowdfund $8,000 that he claimed was for this office space, uh, but he had already been squatting there. And this is the reason that he was actually thrown out of this office space is because this, uh, this employee tried and failed to get this order. Um, unfortunately, you know, I guess there just wasn't enough in here to uh, merit it, but it just kind of shows like what he, like, this is what he does. He bullies and harasses and intimidates people. Right. So that's the that's the restraining order right there. And this is one of 10, 10 different orders. 10. Yes, I would say that he is a liar. He is a squatter and he is also a criminal. That would be accurate. Yes. Um, so I just want to give some shout outs here. Sorry, I do see that we're getting some uh, some things in for the uh, legal um, fee fund. So I just want to thank people. Sorry, as they're coming in. My bad. One second. Just came into my email. Thank you, Michael Bowman. Thank you, Timothy Mahoney. Um, thank you. Oh, hold on. And thank you, Wom Combat Wombat. Thank you. Thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. All right. So I appreciate that guys very much. All right. Someone said, if adults want to give money to a person, isn't that on them to research the person beforehand? Yeah, but not everybody does. That's why we do that. Yeah. That's, that's why we do what we do here. Um, you know, I did forget to mention that he's a freeloader too. And he's a coward. He's a coward. Um, I don't have any desire, I guess would be the word. I don't have any desire to debate delete laws at this point in time. I just don't. I have not brought it up. He's the only one that brought up debate. It's not lost on me though, that he says, you can't beat me in a debate. And then goes, I would never debate you. I mean, I, I could be you in a debate. Jose, because I'm smarter than you are, like exponentially so. Uh, but I can understand why you wouldn't want that to happen. You're a coward. And he has a huge problem with women. Um, I do want to give a big shout out to the women who are actively, actively looking into every corner of his life right now. There is a group of what I can only describe as like warrior Midwestern mo mom women, <laughs> like, or mid when, hold on, Midwestern mom warrior women. We'll do the alliteration there because they are just unbelievable. Do not fuck with these women. They are pulling up everything as we speak. Everything. Don't you think his little video there is a little weird? The first thing he lists off is that you can't beat me up. What is he, 10 years old? <laughs> I, that's debatable, too. <laughs> yeah. That's debatable. Yeah, I know. And again, he's the only one who has ever, you know, made any sort of comments about any sort of physical harm. He did write mm -hmm. that very bizarre message to yeah. me through Josh Abrams, where he did insinuate that uh, there would be a possibility that he would close my face for me. Um, yep. I just, I don't, I don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. Don't leave East Coast women out. Well, I mean, obviously don't fuck with us Boston bitches, but right. Like just don't do that. <laughs> um, yes. The ability to beat someone up doesn't make him any less wrong. He's just wrong. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, obviously, like this establishes that he has a criminal record. However, um, there are other charges that we're going to be reading out. He has a stalking charge. He has nine other civil harassment orders that we have to go through. There is a charge for making terroristic threats in there. Um, so we will be going through every single one as they come in every single one. And that this doesn't even count the investigative reports that I've asked for, uh, because there are some police investigative reports that didn't necessarily result in charges, but our interactions with the police and do give us more insight into the kind of person that we're dealing with here. Um, I also want to point out that I did have a conversation with Direct D today, um, and he did relay to me that um, he is not a supporter of uh, Chile de Castro's whatsoever, nor is San Joaquin Valley Transparency. Um, they are absolutely without a shadow of a doubt denouncing his behavior and separating themselves completely um this is for the fun chile is also a sovereign citizen thank you david keller yeah 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 and people are saying i'm here for the transparency of chile's record absolutely yeah absolutely yeah. And this is, again, like, this is what he, he does. He, uh, he, he harasses and bullies people or attempts to anyway. It's not going to work here. It's absolutely not going to work here. Um, Aiden, you might not care, but I'm sure that Chili does very much so. Very much so. Yeah. So, what do you think, Pat? Yeah, I think it's... Uh... Very interesting. I think he's definitely uh, not telling the truth about much of anything, really. And this, the, the whole thing that's uh, really sticking out in my mind is that he doesn't seem to tell the truth. And uh, the fact that he lies about who he is is really uh, perplexing, you know? It's, right. It for, just gets pulled over for a traffic, traffic stop, and he doesn't tell the truth about who he is. Or he'll, like, give his friend's ID to the cop. It's just really strange. And so I still can't really understand out. why. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, but, what we're trying to figure out right now, I guess what we're trying to ferret through is, is he just a pathological liar? Or is this just in his nature that he lies about everything down to his own identity? Or is there something back there that, uh, that is, um, you know, deeper and darker that he's hiding from? Yeah. Right. Or both, which are poll, like 81% people's uh, voted both. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, Chili, just so that we're fair on this, like, you know, you, I do, I have a request in with Benton County for your stalking conviction and it's been in for about a little over a week now. So that's going to be coming any day now. Um, and when I do get that, I will swiftly and uh, surely be putting that right out in public for everybody to see so that we can see the details. And um, I also have the requests in for all the police reports on these matters. And they're a little bit slow and a little bit expensive because it's so old, but they're not impossible to get. So at some point, the police reports are going to be coming back too with even more details. And I will be reading that off as well, right? Yeah. Um, Janice Farmer says, love how Chili trolls are on here, but the first, uh, but are the first to want us blocked from Chili's page. I will never block any of Chili's people. I don't play like that. They they can say whatever they want in here. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, no, he is up. He has probably a path. I wouldn't say, I can't diagnose him, Archangel for Truth. I can't do that. I'm not a doctor. So I can't say definitively that he is a pathological liar. What I can point out is that my observation and my opinion is that he exhibits the behavior of a pathological liar. And I want you guys to hold that thought because today we're just touching on some of his criminal history. We haven't touched on any of his fabrications yet. Um, I would point to things like, was there really a no-knock warrant? Um, is he really a wrestling champion? Was he on the cover of Muscle Magazine? I already have the answers to most of these questions, right? Mm -hmm. And they're not going to look good on Chili because he is a liar. I mean, that that is that is absolutely true right there. He's a liar. W whether or not it's pathological, I can't say for sure. I don't know. Um, but I can say that he is a liar. A few people were saying during chat while you were doing all the reading that he was arrested again. I'm sure you probably already knew that. For uh, false information to a police officer? I'm not sure that they, they weren't saying. I'm not sure when the recent arrest was. Yeah, there's there's another one. Well, no, recently he was arrested in um, Ironton, right? Like that's oh, okay. extremely recent. That's like a month ago, right? Yeah, he also said that Ben Shapiro defended him. Yeah, but I mean, it's, it's a lie. That's like, it's a lie. 
And so again, can I diagnose him and say that he's a pathological liar? No. Can I observe and opine that he exhibits behaviors <clears throat> that would uh, be consistent with being a pathological liar? Yeah, in my opinion, he does. Ben Shapiro wouldn't go near, anywhere near this guy. <laughs> Sue me. And it looks like Archangel for Truth is still going off with this uh, gas siphoning rumor. I mean, that actually is defamatory if we want to talk about it. Um, I'm being accused of a crime that I did not commit with absolutely no evidence to support that this crime exists. It's easy to disprove. Go pull my record. My name is Catherine Peter. That's K-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E. -E. Last name Peter. P-E-T-E-R. I live in Massachusetts. Please, please find where I have gotten arrested this year or in the last five years, um, for that matter. And please show me where it was for siphoning gas. All right. Otherwise, you are repeating a defamatory lie that has been spread by Chile with absolutely no evidence and a reckless disregard for the truth. We can couple that with the abusive and nasty and vile message that he sent me both via um, Josh Abrams and then my email. And we can establish that he's you know, spreading this lie out of actual malice. And now we're veering into, you know, lawsuit territory. I don't think I would waste my time because Chili's one defense would be that he has no credibility. So, so and he has, you know, no, um, no good standing of his own. So to say that he is somehow affecting my reputation would be ludicrous. But what he's doing essentially is defaming me. Again, you are more than welcome. Like, if you can find this arrest for siphoning gas, please, I, I don't just invite you, I implore you. Go in public, read the facts of the case out loud, right? Otherwise, like, shut yep. the fuck up, Archangel. You're just not, you're not being honest, right? If they wanted the real dirt on you, they'd uh, look into the 94 Civic incident. Yeah, the 94 Civic incident. Oh, don't tell them about that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's one rabbit hole they don't want to go down. Uh, yeah, he say uh, Chili's also claiming that he has a legal team. Uh, Chili informed me that he would be suing me, but I was not allowed to talk to his legal team. <laughs> so I really believe they exist. I definitely do. They it makes a lot of sense that they do. Yeah, yeah. Archangel for Truth is too stupid to understand that they're being lied to. Um, so I wouldn't I wouldn't stress that too much. This is a person that is unfortunately too intellectually challenged to be able to recognize the fact that they are being gaslit, lied, and manipulated. Um, yeah, I also have some uh, recorded phone conversations uh, of Chili between some people that I should be uh, putting out soon and some text messages where he just absolutely abusively batters people uh, because they don't agree with him or won't do what he says. So I'm going to be putting that up soon, too. This is a slow burn. We're going to be talking about Chili for a while. We're going to be doing it a while. What do you think a while is next six months? I don't know. I don't know. Definitely in, uh, plenty of content for a while. It's, I find it very interesting. He's a piece of shit. He really is. Yeah. Paul, you want to come up and uh, sound off? You can do that. Hold on. I'll put this up. Anyone can join except for Chili. Chili's not invited. Paul, Paul's the attorney, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like that guy. He's a fucking con artist. This guy is an absolute fucking con artist. Even Chili should be uh, welcomed up, shouldn't he? No. <laughs> He's not invited. Oh, there goes Pat. And here comes Pat again. Oh, there you are. Hit the back button, man. I'm wondering if Chili's legal team consists of King, Kim Blandino. Ah, you know, it is best to slow roast your chili to uh, achieve optimum flavor. A lot of it, too, is that this is just a very confusing, like, spider web here. There's a lot to go. I mean, like, you know, case in point, um, I usually will not dig back into people's families, genealogy, or history like that. But he's made so many like just um what's the word i'm looking for i guess just he's told so many lies about his own father right that we had to go back and actually actually trace who his father is to establish that none of what he was saying about his father is true uh oh chuck is here is that the real chuck stegel hi chuck hey what's up 
Nothing much. What about you? You know, just up here uh, talking about uh, Chili De Castro. Yeah. Guy sounds like a creep. That's, yeah, I would agree. I would agree. So, Paul, what's your uh, what's your take on everything? I mean, I've said it before and I'll say it again. His behavior is escalating and getting worse and worse. And I predict he's going to catch a real substantive charge in the near future. Um, yeah, I, um, I, I, I'm hoping so. I mean, I think it's concerning how much violence he's calling for and the way that he's waving around that firearm, um, you know, and we're still trying to kind of discern whether or not he's legally able to carry that firearm, which, uh, it sounds like we're going to be, uh, getting some, some answers to that probably tonight. I think we're finally getting a definitive answer on, um, Oh, why did I lose connection to my camera? That's weird. But getting a definitive answer on whether or not um, he can actually legally own that firearm. So I'm just waiting on that call. Um, somebody said earlier in the chat that that call was happening this evening. So I'm very excited to hear that because I will be able to actually go live and definitively announce whether or not he can have that firearm. Hey, Desert. Desert. Yeah, what's up? Hey there. Am I here? Yep. You're here. Oh, I, I, I just wanted to pop in because uh, you, I was looking back in the Wayback Machine and some of the old guys here will, and will remember Kyle Stone swine repellent out of Indiana. Mm -hmm. uh, he had 11 protective orders um, filed against them. Uh, and let me see. So I'd say in my list here, two were never served. So yeah, yeah. Uh, Chile is now number one on the protective order list. <laughs> oh. We have Tina with us as well. Hello, Tina. Hey, Tina. Hey, Kate. I'm showing my face because uh, everybody keeps saying that I'm not the one jo joining your live stream. So, hey, guys, it's me. Oh, I'm my here. God. It, oh, it's my like, God. The lies never stop. Really? Oh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's unbelievable. I haven't heard anything about our special call yet, but... Um, I do want to shout out to the Lawrence County Sheriff's Department. Yes, Kate, they're big, you. huge fans of yours. <laughs> Just thought I'd share that with you. Um, it is surprising to me that he hasn't gotten arrested again based on the fact that he threatened to jump out of a car, beat a man, beat his face into the concrete, file a restraining order, and then sue him. All because he drove past Chile or was following Chile and told him to go back to California. And he has been, you know, um, misrepresenting that that man is a rapist, correct? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Thank so, you. I totally forgot about that. He's literally, because this man happened to, like, drive past him, essentially, and he didn't like the way that he interacted with him, he is now publicly defaming this man, claiming that he is a rapist, in an incident that does not exist. It never happened. The guy's not a rapist. It's not true. And I believe I believe it was Blue's video that he shared from inside the courtroom when everybody was sitting there waiting. Chili uh, once again says to Chili Pauly, I told him to get on his knees, you know, just like I told you. And then he insults this bald man and his wife stands up. And she says, my husband's Jewish. And all of a sudden, Ch Chile is now a Colombian Jew. Um, right. and, it's, and he says, God bless. And I'm really sorry. All of my Jewish friends would have said something a little different yeah. than God bless. I can't remember um, the exact word he used, but he mispronounced Ashkenazi as well. He, he did. Oh my God. My he God. did. And then he's sent, standing there talking to Pam. And he says to Pam... Why did you try to arrest, I, I believe it was Sarah, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong, when she tried to file a complaint, and Pam says, I don't know what you're talking about. That's the Ironton police chief. And he says, it's all on video, Pam. It's all on video. And she says, I'd love to see that video. And he goes, well, we're filing the request for that video today. So, Chili, you haven't seen the video. 
So you're going off of what? Right. So just some of the inconsistencies. Yeah, I, I, it's pretty gross to me that, um, you know, he's he's going out here. And not only is he lying and lying on people's names and defaming people and trying to scramble to take the attention off of anything but himself. But, um, you know, he's threatening to murder people and feels that he's entirely legally justified to do so. Yeah, he put this man's name, face and everything in his chat last night and people were threatening to go kill this man. Yep. I mean, seriously, that's doxing. Yep. Um in its finest and then because some guy rick rolled him pulled up beside him and was blaring rick astley he wants everyone in his chat to find this person and if anybody hasn't noticed chili asks everybody else to do the research for him yeah. because it's beneath him to do his own yeah so well unfortunately it's actually more likely that Proper research will be done if he's not the one doing it. Blue, there's, if you scroll back up into the chat, uh, the. Here, I'll add link. it. I'll hold on. Yeah. Blue I'll wants to jump in. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. He does, he claims that, you know, now that this man has apparently stalked him, that he can legally kill him, and that's fine. <laughs> like, unbelievable. Oh, we lost, we lost dear Tina. I'll, I'll uh, jump out so you can bring more people up. I just wanted to bring that little tidbit of fact in. <laughs> right. Um, I know right, you've we'll been doing you research on this too, so I appreciate that. Not a problem. No, Blue, you come up with no shirt or you don't come on at all. How about that? <laughs> Blue, if attorneys in Florida can log into court on Zoom without shirts on, you can at least come up here without a shirt on. Um, we're only 500 subs short of 20,000. I'll take my shirt off if we get to 20,000. Oh my god, no, <laughs> no, I don't want to get to 20,000 right now. I'm not ready, <laughs> I haven't lost enough weight. I don't uh, know about him trying I to arrest. Thank, I, gotta, I gotta thank some other people too. I'm sorry, thank you, Edmund Davis, thank you, uh, Frank. Thank you, um, Silver Diamond. Thank you, Silver Diamond. Thank you guys very much uh, for contributing. Um, I, I, Michael Bowman, I was trying to elect you to this position, but I don't think you got my text because my phone's still messed up. But I would like someone to oversee sort of where the funds are being allocated just for transparency's sake. My nomination is Michael Bowman because I know he's a really trustworthy, good guy. Um, so, Sergeant Bacon. Yes, hello. Love wearing a shirt. shirt. That's kind of a well, bummer. Chili thought it was a super cop, so it felt appropriate. Oh, love it. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love it, too. It was Rude Boy. I don't know who Rude Boy Daytona is. I don't know if I what? trust him. Camera them. pointing at the ceiling is never good, though. Yeah, it's not a good idea. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sorry. Continue. Oh, he's Michael Bowman, so that's him? I don't know. Yep. Yep. So, sorry. So, uh, yeah, no, uh, you're also getting sued, correct, Blue Bacon? Uh, there's nothing official has happened, but he's definitely been throwing that around. I think he he avoids me quite a bit. Uh, I started hammering him pretty hard early on before he realized what was happening, after Team Skeptic had his way with him, and my God, Team Skeptic had his way with him. Yeah, he Without regrets Team that. Skeptic, I would have never never come across Chili. And it's just Chili kept saying things that were so wrong, just line after line after line. I'm like, I'm just going to, you know, I can, I, I wrote probably three videos from that and went, yeah, that's going to be enough. Like, there's, there's a lot of good stuff, a lot of educational things I can do about, you know, there's the video about Reagan, which I delayed quite a bit because the nonsense didn't stop. There was, uh, you know, our handcuffs torture. That was a big one. So I was like, that's, yeah. stop it. Uh, concealing a weapon and how easy that can be. And these are all things that I've had specific training on, not the Reagan thing, but uh, the handcuffs and the weapons, that is 100% a big part of the training for law enforcement. 
addressing how concealable weapons can be. And I, I failed one of my training, one of my very first training scenarios, uh, because we had two people searching. We both assumed that the other person had, had searched uh, a certain part of the waistband and there was a gun there. It was real, real concealable. And so I'm like, I got to address this. It's a great learning thing. And then it just, it took off. So he initially went after me real hard when I was doing my first stream on him when I was handcuffed. Uh, and he's like, you have to, you have, you have to debate me. And I was like, bro, I'm in the middle of the stream. Like, send me an email. Like, you'd be, what is, like, deprive these people of the entertainment? No, we'll do that later. Uh, and then, of course, there's the infamous email exchange. And after right. that, just just wouldn't, just want nothing to do with me, wouldn't talk about me, wouldn't address it, which is fine by me. Uh, I'm not here to engage him. I'm here to address the things he's getting wrong. And then other channels started doing it, and Delete Laws already had it in his head, or Chili DeCastro already had it in his head, like, don't engage with Blue Bacon, but these other people, ha, there, who are they? And so you guys are getting all this attention. I'm like, hold on a second. What about little old me? Where, what's going on? So, uh, yeah. So I sent him an email, being like, "Hey, buddy, never sent me that 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 link to that debate a month ago. What happened? He, Don't contact me again, or I'll sue you. I hope you contact me again. Like, does that mean that I do you get to contact? I don't know. Anyway, because uh, that I feel like would negate the whole harassment thing. Not really sure. I'm not going to push it." Uh, I'm not. I'm not here to harass him by any means. I'm just here to correct. Oh, him. I, I push it all the time. I told him so when he tried try that with me. If you contact me again, I'll get you for harassment. I'm like, if you don't want to, uh, you communicate with me. Stop communicating. Well, that's, that's the thing, it, right? You're so, not getting the last word on me. It doesn't happen. It does not happen. I don't really want to go to. I, I will win a lawsuit against him, right? If he, I mean, I will. If he files one against me, I will win. I have no question about that. I play oh, my cards yeah. right. I I play the long game. He does not play the long game. Uh, but I don't I don't want to unnecessarily find myself in that situation when it is avoidable, right? Like I'm not gonna test those waters because I don't I'm not here to to be up in his business directed at him. I, I exist on the internet and he can feel free to avoid me. Uh, he's having more and more trouble doing that as more of his viewers are like, wait a second, but he said, uh mm. so you know, okay, that's a thing that's happening that I have no control over. Uh, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna respond to that email because he asked me not to. All right, cool. I'm, I'm a nice guy. Sure. Uh, won't do that. Something just broke in my house. I think anyway, it doesn't matter. Hearing noises. Someone <laughs> might be breaking in. I'm getting swatted as a joke. I'm not. It might be good. Um, so yeah, if, if he, he'd probably have to articulate why he didn't block the email uh, and it would certainly be a lot easier to say it is harassment because they kept finding new ways to contact me after I blocked them. Um, if you really want to an easy win, sure. Uh, now, has that stopped me from responding to people's comments on his Facebook page that aren't him? No, no, it hasn't stopped that. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not talking to him. If he wants to reach out to me on that Facebook page, He's more than welcome to, but he has to initiate the conversation. So, yeah, feeling a little bit left out about that because uh, he hasn't directly. He's he's threatened to sue if I continue a, a line of conduct, but you guys have certainly received more than I have in regards to that. Well, all I, know, all I know is when the lawsuit gets filed in Mississippi, um, the parties in Mississippi will will all go down there and have a nice big Airbnb um, bring the apple juice and we'll have a ball. Yeah. I mean, I really, I'm not averse to him suing me. I don't care. I will continue to operate the same way that I always do. And if he tries to drag me to court, like it wouldn't, it's like anything that he were to try to file on me right now would not survive mm. uh, sub summary judgment. Just absolutely no question whatsoever. Doesn't, doesn't really make me sweat at all. Um, he's actually articulated that he doesn't care if he wins a lawsuit against me. He just wants to force me to hire an attorney and then drag it out to drain yeah. me. I'm sure that would look really good um, you know, when presented to a judge. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure the fact that uh, you know he, uh, he he states that he's suing me for claiming that he has a criminal record, and then turning around and saying, "Well, I I did plead guilty to a 
shoplifting charge, like, you know, that's going to work out well in his favor. I'm sure that when he cries about harassment and I can show that he initiated contact with me um, and continues to do so, that that's really going to work out well. I'm not worried about him at all. He's all talk. He's just, he's all talk. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Frankie. Frankie said it. He's all talk. Yeah. You would be very hard pressed to damage the credibility of your argument more than the way he's proceeding to say, right don't contact me anymore, but I hope you do so that I can sue you. I don't care if I win or not. I just want to make you hire a lawyer so it hurts you financially, et cetera, et cetera. That would be very telling when presented to a fact finder, either a judge or a jury. Yeah. Now, Ohio doesn't have any uh, anti-slap statutes, right? Do you know? I actually don't know. I do not have to deal with slap statutes in my line Fair. of work. <laughs> Yeah, and a slap usually deals mostly with the government, actually. So gotcha. it's where the government okay. tries to file on you. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, I have to address this. Uncle Artie, I like you. I want to like you. But you need to stop coming in my chat and being such a fucking bitch, okay? I didn't disown you. I don't care about you enough to disown you. You can plug <laughs> your shitty live stream in my live stream as much as you want. It doesn't bother me. But you need to shut the fuck up. You sound like chili. And like not ironically. The reason I don't have you on my panels is because every time you come on my panels, you kill them. So that's fine. Go kill your own. Shut the fuck up in my chat. Respectfully. Thank you. Look at Blue Bacon's dying over here. You already know. What, is, what am I walking into? <laughs> right. He's crying. He's been crying in my Discord for oh. days. Kate disowned me. I never owned you to disown you. Jesus. I have no dog in this fight. <laughs> it's not a fight. No, it's not a fight. It's how I talk to everyone. It's how I talk to people mm. I like. It's how I talk to people I don't. It's just how I talk. I'm from Boston. I don't know what to tell you. Jesus. <laughs> right. Like, please, please. I'm just trying to keep my stream afloat here. Um, crying. Yeah. Um, I, and like, you know, we're just... <laughs> someone said, kill the shot, Caden. I mean, Chili's pissed me off. He really has with this, um, especially the way that he keeps attacking these like random citizens and a lot of women too and just threaten it's just it really bothers me to watch and the way that he literally he emailed me at one point was like you need to look up what criminal record means fool after i explained to him you know like what rap sheet stands for he should know that <laughs> oh, didn't know you that. know criminal record only means felonies at no point ever what so wait a minute mars life uncensored whose cell phone number are you going to give out mine oh Mine. Uh, that would be harassment. I mean, I give my cell phone number out to everyone oh, okay. anyway. It doesn't really bother me. Yeah. Intended to be important. That's all right. Anyway. Is that is that Chili or Josh? I'm just curious. Uh Mars Life Uncensored is actually Mar his name is uh Mitch Mars Life. Um Got it. He's, he's fun. He's a little insane. Um, but in a good way. Yeah. Um, he only admits to one restraining order and he says the woman is nuts. No, I mean, he's got, uh, I've counted 10 so far, both yeah. women and men. He only admits to one, one because right. he's only seen us provide one. Before Correct. we provided anything was, I don't have any criminal records, suck it. Then right. we started dropping stuff. You'll notice that he starts admitting that things exist after we start proving that things exist. Right. Correct. Only then. Right. Like that, if, if anyone's confused about where's the lie, that's it. That's at that point, like Archangel of Truth, I don't understand. That's the lie. Right. Where did my lighting go? What is happening? I'm fading away. Uh, if he's willing to lie about that, what else is he lying about? Oh, a ton. I'm telling you, a ton. Everything. I'm just, I mean, as interest, I, I usually pull criminal records, and, and that's usually kind of our deal here. What's been more fascinating to me with Chili is not what you do find, but what you don't find, right? There's right. so much shit that, like, he says happened that there is no record of happening. It's fair. And I mean, just running through his genealogy today and getting kind of an idea of, like, where he comes from and where he started um, and, you know, some of the family dynamics and stuff in there has been fascinating to start to get in, into. He, I mean, he's just, again, can I say that he's a pathological liar? I'm not qualified to make that diagnosis can i opine that he behaves as i believe a patholo pathological liar would behave like 110 percent. stand behind that yeah and and bits and pieces who is in ironton ohio i see him in the chat hey kudos to you my mm -hmm. man 
Yes. Bits and pieces. <laughs> I was watching you today. Yes. Bits and pieces. Please email me. I have some things I want to ask of you. <laughs> oh, man. Um, sorry, I'm laughing because you're going to be like, what is this woman thinking about here? But it, it'll be <laughs> worth it, I swear. I'm going to put my email address in there. Please reach out. I just I have a couple favors to ask. You will be compensated oh, no. for them. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. What was very entertaining is when Chili went to the auction today, there was a person who started directly to his face, confronting him on his misinterpretations of mm -hmm. the, the tow guy. Yeah, the 2013 towing case that he says <laughs> now means no tow company can actually sell a vehicle against the will of the owner who it was taken from. And he's just demonstrably wrong. But he walks away. Because, oh, I say you're not worth my time. Right. No, because right, right. you know you can't out argue the guy who knows what he's talking about. I did appreciate. Now, my concern is the people in Ironton, uh, as much as I thoroughly enjoyed the the footage from the ground, uh, I, I do caution be careful with what you with what you say and do. And I know you guys are going to hear you talking about it like, hey, don't touch him, you know, but. Uh, if you antagonize him, it only makes it harder to prosecute uh, for certain things that the the state or the county or the municipality might be looking into prosecuting. Uh, so I do suggest just being careful with that. Uh, but I did appreciate because Chili's like, we're going to get our thousand people. He had what one and then one other guy who's like, I appreciate you, but I'm not really here for you. Right, 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 right. right. Like, yeah, it was good. It was good. And all these like grizzled old men with guns on their hips and you can watch if you watch the video you can watch the men in the just as sort of a, a mob I, mob seems let's not use the word mob as a a unit just sort of shifting with him as he walks around like a good 12 people just do, 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 sort of making sure he's not getting himself in too much trouble right. so he starts something like they 100% wanted to step in and good on them for policing their own actions to be like, wait, no, hold it, no, let's, let's back off a little bit. We don't need him to be, you know, to feel, feel like he's won anything here by enraging us. But, oh, watching, watching the group react to him. Oh, watching the that. people in the courthouse. Oh my God. When they, when the doors finally opened and they all wanted away from him. <laughs> I mean, and they're all sitting there <laughs> laughing at him. But don't you know that means they're being paid by the police? That's that's what that means. Sure, sure, sure. They're laugh at him if they're benefiting from the system. Yeah. Unbelievable. And and shout out to all the people from Ironton who are tuning in because you don't know what to believe. Um, the last four days, I've been contacted by several. Um, who are trying to get to the truth and anything that I'm telling you, I'm giving you case numbers. I'm asking you, go find it yourself. Don't take my word for it. Please go look and see it for yourself. That's right. Don't take her word for it. Take mine. Yes. Yeah. Take his. Mm. Right. No, no, please do your own research, please. Yes, look absolutely. Up look up what Chili is telling you. Look at both sides, make a decision, make an informed decision. And, and none of us are downing any of the people of Ironton, Ohio. We actually do care. And there are probably some people there who have legitimate complaints, legitimate concerns, but Chile is not your answer. There are nonprofit organizations out there that can help you. Mm -hmm. If people Set believe that they have actual grounds to file federal civil rights lawsuits, they should contact a federal civil rights attorney. Chili is not legally educated. He demonstrates that he doesn't have a sufficient understanding of how to even read case law to be of actual help to people. And if anything, he's going to make their situations worse. He has actually, to my knowledge, filed several lawsuits on other people's behalves and he's essentially leaving them in a river in a canoe without a paddle because now they are on their own to try and pursue these lawsuits with no knowledge of the proper civil procedure of their own 
and they're either going to have to spend an egregious amount of their own time researching these matters, or they're going to have to spend an egregious amount of their own money hiring an attorney on the spot to help them pursue their cases. And fix the filings. Unless you're actually prepared with the case, you shouldn't file it until you're ready. What he does, hey, hey guys, well, what he does, he loves to spout off these these cases. Like you know, when you go to an attorney for help, they don't start spouting off, you know, legal precedents and shit. He, he, he likes to sit there when someone talks to him about something, he'll say, oh, yeah, Homer versus Town of Springfield, 1994, and shit like that. And, oh, he's, he knows what he's talking about, you know, he, and, you know he'll, he'll get him to file my lawsuit. Fucking <laughs> Uh, I think it's so fascinating too. He's so he's attached himself to Terry v. Ohio, and he is <laughs> constantly trying to f- draw these false equivalencies. Like he will pick up cases that clearly were not Terry stops at all, and be like, "That was a Terry stop." Like, no, I mean, it was a tragic situation or a sad situation, but it wasn't a Terry stop. You know, like I, he doesn't even seem <laughs> to fully understand his life's mission, which is overturning Terry v. Ohio. I don't think he fully understands uh, the the case there at all, or the precedent that it set. I don't think well, that he really. He, understands he thinks as soon as the. He thinks as soon as a policeman gets out of the car, it's a Terry stop. Right, no right, right. It's, it's a Terry he's, stop. He's equated literally any exercise of police powers to the powers yeah. striving from the Terry v. Ohio case, which is not true. Oh, shit. Well, somebody kind of um, just mentioned they kind of stole what I was, they kind of or covered what I was going to talk about. But that, did you, and I think you guys covered it just, but fleetingly. But that that tow truck guy was ready to fully explain to to uh, to Chile. The process so that he could quit giving out giving out misinformation. And as soon as the guy started to talk and knew what he was talking about, you saw Chili walking away. I got yep. he's he was man, he was getting away as fast as he could. And after he just said, you know, explain it to me, you know. <laughs> I said, All right, I'll explain it to you then. Right. It's almost as though he seeks out people who are not as well versed as he is on a matter so that he can try and berate them into submitting to his arguments. But this particular resident of Ironton was ready to point out the actual minutia of the case. He was saying, no, the particular type of uh, seizure or forfeiture was different in this case than what's going on right now at this auction. And so they aren't the same situations, which is what any actual attorney would do in arguing a case. You point out how cases you're citing are different or the same and why that supports your argument. Yeah. But as soon as the guy actually started pointing out those distinctions to Chile, he turned and walked away, even though he had, like you said, just said, well, explain it to me. (laughs) He doesn't want to actually be corrected. He just wants to fight somebody who he thinks he can beat in an intellectual debate. Or right, right. Exactly, and important. as soon as they know something, yeah, he gets away. Mm-hmm. Well, this was <clears throat> today was kind of a minor event. Uh, you know, they didn't have the throngs of thousands of uh, people showing up to protest this auction, um, but so, but it was an event nevertheless, and the police were were aware of it. And in the past, we've seen like in some there was one in Mayo, Florida, where there was an event started, and in in, in these are small. I'm focusing on small towns because that's kind of what our engine is, and. Um, and the police handled it one way. And then there was one in Madison, uh, North Carolina, and the police you know, decided to handle it a little different way. They could either take two courses of actions, usually is just back away and let the guy do what he wants to do. He'll be gone in a little while and all that stuff. Or they just go in, like, well, we're not going to put up with this bullshit. We're going to start, you know, locking people up uh, if, they, if they cause a ruckus and whatever. But it was evident that the police were like, going for the former like we're just gonna let this guy do his little deal because if anybody else would have stood in the middle of a road having a conversation with another vehicle blocking traffic if i'd have done that i'd have been told to move along or i'd have got cited you know because it's fucking law against that shit you know especially if i said no fuck you they can go around they can just go around like <laughs> that shit ain't gonna work you know but they let him they let him do it they just they just so he there's ways he talks about how oppressive and egregious the cops are to him but the more crazy you act, it seems to me that I've noticed, the uh, you get a little more latitude, you know. Yeah. And I do want to. Hellfire asked the question. Um, he now says he's been studying constitutional law for twenty years. He's only been doing Hellfire what he's doing about teaching about Terry, Ohio, since June of last year, right. uh, on TikTok before he got before he got his large account banned for community guideline violations. 
No one took his account down but him because he violated TikTok's community guidelines. Right, yeah. You can and, actually and he, track his businesses over time. Uh, he didn't start yeah. this until he didn't start even like going into any legal stuff at all, even with his coded court show that never went anywhere. I think they filmed yeah. seven episodes maybe and it was never published. Coded friends. Uh, coded. Yeah. So he had coded friends and then coded court. And that's uh, coded court was like his first anything into anything legal uh, for any of his business ventures, with the exception of like filing an LLC. And that would have been, I think, earliest 2016, probably. It was put out around 2018. Uh, and he says he's been studying this for 20 years because, oh, the no knock warrant, whatever. But he also says that he didn't start studying until after Brianna Taylor was shot. That right. wasn't 20 years ago. That was <laughs> two years ago. You right. can't study for 20 years well, when Blue, it hasn't you, been 20 years. Blue, right. you got to understand the community that there were that, 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 that this community always uses that term. They always use that 20 year period. They would say that 20 years. Yep. We got everybody says that all over the place. I've been doing that for 20 years. They've been like five or six different disciplines of their life that they spent 20 years doing. So they'd be like 120 years old or some shit. But the, the funny part, I heard him recently say, and I want to get, uh, is it Paul? Is it Paul? I'm sorry. Is it Paul? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you hear him say, he's, Hey, when I get done with this, uh, after I get done, I'm going to go to uh, California and, um, I'm just going to take the bar and become a lawyer because you don't have to have a law degree in lawyer in California to to uh, to uh, become a lawyer. And I looked it up, and he's kind of right, but it does say that you had to have a certain amount of apprenticeship and uh, working under the tutelage of a, of a of a legal firm for X amount of time. What was it, like eighteen hours a week for two years? I mean, you don't just get a well, pop over there and take a bar exam and boop, I'm a lawyer now. You know. <laughs> I thought I had looked uh, I, at the. And oh, sorry, Red I'm, I'm Sock. I'm this as we go. Oh, Red uh, Sock, Josh, Chili. Welcome to the chat. <laughs> Is he in there? Oh, so good. We, no, we went over to California, take the bar exam, become a lawyer, no problem. I mean, where do you learn procedure and shit like that? I mean, well, I mean, God. And I, I thought I had looked up the requirement as well. Yeah, the State Bar of California states that you have to have three or four years of study at a law school accredited by the American Bar Association to apply for the... the was that three states? He said today that he knows the Bible like he knows the Constitution in what regard that he knows <laughs> neither, right? He knows neither. If he, if he knows the Constitution, and, he kept repeating he's going to be the next president of the state of Ohio. He said that more than once. Yeah, yeah. And, and the governor of Ireton. What? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 No. But he's studying constitutional right. law for 20 years. <laughs> right, right, right. And I will be the first person to admit that studying for law school, studying for the bar exam, and working in an actual law office are three distinctly different things. I would think you, so. Yeah. A person can legitimately study for just the bar exam, I'm sure, pass it, uh, and not have gone to law school. But the majority of states do have requirements that you have some kind of legal education before taking the bar exam. Right. You know, that's just like anyone at, over there on that channel, you know, claiming to be a paralegal that might still be in college and not a paralegal. I'm not sure what the qualifications are in their state, but I know in my state, if you're giving out legal advice before you even become a licensed paralegal, they can actually kick you out of college. Well, paralegals can't give legal advice. A paralegal doing something that constitutes the practice of law is the unauthorized practice of law. It's literally only attorneys who have passed the bar exam and are licensed in whatever state they're practicing in by the Supreme Court of that state who can do things that are the practice of law. And Chile keeps saying, I can help people fill yeah. out their paperwork and that's not the practice of law. No. Well, no, you can't. That's what I wanted to ask you. Yeah, because I had that. Today, he said that so many times. First of all, he said to the tow truck drivers, I'm going to sue you. I'm going to sue you, which we know he can't. He didn't have, he didn't have standing. But he then he falls back and says, who owns this car? Call me. I'll help you fill out paperwork and file a lawsuit. And I don't know if that's that's what I wanted. To, you're saying that that's kind of on the edge or, or is that unlawful? Well, two things. Helping somebody fill out paperwork for a lawsuit is the practice of law. 
right. you're advising somebody on what their rights are going to be and what the merits of their case are. That is the practice of law. What Chili's doing is basically soliciting people to come to him so that they can file lawsuits, which if he were an actual attorney would also violate the rules of professional conduct that attorneys have. If I'm a lawyer, I can't run up to everybody and say, hey, let's see if you have a lawsuit so I can file it. Yeah, Attorneys before. can advertise their firm and say what services they provide on billboards, but they have to let the clients come to them and say, here's my problem. You can't do the, the colloquial ambulance chasing like people right. claim attorneys do. That's So, so how long before Chile could get in trouble in the current state he's in for allegedly practicing law without a license? Or can he? Well, I would imagine, is there a difference, even there kind of a distinction between what he's doing, let's say, uh, criminal law versus civil law? I mean, I mean, okay, yeah. I mean, I'm really going to mess with him for, for helping someone file file papers for a lawsuit rather than act like they're going to defend somebody in a criminal uh, situation. It's kind so of different. If somebody commits the unauthorized practice of law, that is contrary to a statute in Ohio's revised code, but the Supreme Court of Ohio is the body that governs the practice of law. When I, I originally came from Minnesota, when I had to transfer my law license from Minnesota to Ohio, I had to petition the Supreme Court of Ohio to let me into, or let me practice law in Ohio. And they have a subset which is called the Office of Disciplinary Counsel, and that is the agency that conducts investigations into people, attorneys or otherwise, who violate the rules of professional conduct or who commit the unauthorized practice of law. Hello, people. What Hi, do you think they name? would say? What, what do you think that body would say if they, uh, I mean, if they saw this? They, say they just got wind of this or a report or something like that, that some guys out there's basically soliciting people to come to him to file a lawsuit against another third party. What would be their uh, course of action? What do you think they would say? Oh, uh, well, it's a simple little tow truck, the $200 tow truck thing. Don't Or would they take it seriously? There were a couple cases that I had read where they were essentially lawsuits by the Office of Disciplinary Counsel against people who had practiced law or who had committed the unauthorized practice of law in Ohio. And somebody, I can't remember the name of the case, but somebody had practiced or had drafted estate planning documents like a will and a power of attorney for somebody else. And they were found responsible for the unauthorized practice of law and fined $10,000. So they take that stuff seriously. Ouch. Okay. Well, you, I mean, I think we kind of see in my eyes, it looks like this is kind of his, his bread and butter right now. Um, Going out, finding people, getting their getting their 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 sob stories, and some of them are pretty are, are really tragic stories. But capitalizing on them and get them to, and then put an out there on social media, generating generating revenue, help out. We need help. This person needs help. We need funds. You know, filing papers, lawsuits cost money, all this stuff. And it seems to be what um, I mean. It seems to be. I think he's a charlatan. I th I really do. I think he's a, I think he's a con artist, uh, and I think he always want, he's always always has been. And if this is his new niche, you know, I mean, you know, capitalizing on other people's misfortunes, it's, it just seems to me like a, a something needs to come to a to a point of of uh, well, I don't want to say I'm not a snitch. Let's put it that way. But it seems like somebody needs to get involved. And and here's the thing about um, the the reason that somebody can represent themselves in court and not somebody else when they aren't an attorney is because it's only their rights they're putting on the line. If Chile were to go into court and try and actually represent somebody, like what happened with Sarah Page, he was told he can't do that pursuant to the power of attorney. But you you can't put somebody else's legal rights at risk. And when, when he's quote unquote helped these people file their federal civil rights lawsuits, uh, the courts accept the paperwork. They don't know that he has either helped or goaded. I'm not sure the exact circumstances of it, but he's gotten them into this circumstance and the courts are going to treat this like a legitimate 
lawsuit filing. So that means if there's a default judgment against them or if there are procedural mistakes that they make, that's going to be held against that person, whether they right. hire an attorney or not. So he's actively putting these people's legal ri rights at risk. And gotcha. that's why I want to caution everybody, don't use Chile as a legal resource. Contact an actual attorney. And I'm glad you I'm glad you mentioned that the the the, the federal civil uh, civil rights aspect because the little this little thing with the tow truck thing like that okay that's a little small claims court thing how 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 much of a person's rights is really at stake and something like that but I see what you're saying definitely with the federal civil rights uh, lawsuits and he says he's got this little boilerplate that he keeps making mistakes on <laughs> oh, I got to correct that as he's filing it oh I got to oh I got to fix that I got to fix that print another one but um, and he gets the clerk to fix it for him. I didn't, I didn't even know that was a thing, you know, fixing a date. If you have clerks in small towns, they're usually a bit more forgiving. Uh, I did some legal work in Minneapolis, which is Hennepin County, and the clerks there, if you had a mistake, they would just send it right back to you and be like, nope, you got to fix it, because they just they dealt with so much paperwork that they couldn't take that time. Right. <laughs> I think that was in Forney. Was that Forney? Yeah, Unez's lawsuit um, was in Forney. So I, this was a question that was asked of me today, and I, I really couldn't. In your opinion, do you think that when he's advising people that they should turn over power of attorney to him, do you think this is like a grift, like he knows what he's doing and what that actually means? Or do you think that he's just like a five-year-old and he has a very juvenile understanding and he hears power of attorney and assumes it literally means like, now I can be your attorney? My initial opinion was that he was doing it for a much more nefarious purpose. Like when I first saw that video of him and Sarah Page going to the Ironton clerk's office to fill that out, right. I thought that he was genuinely trying to either take financial or some other kind of form of advantage of her because a power of attorney is an incredibly serious and powerful document. Right. You should only ever execute one and appoint somebody who you trust without question to act as your attorney, in fact, because if, depending on the powers that you assign to that person, they can go empty your bank account. They can uh, get a new mortgage on your house. They can sell your house. Right. These are really serious things. And so I I worked as an estate planning attorney before moving to Ohio. So I, I drafted powers of attorney. I advised clients on the rights that they were essentially sharing with this other person and why it was so important that they trust them explicitly. But we were also on the lookout for people who were being taken advantage of. You know, you have very elderly parents who have adult children who need to help manage their affairs. You want to be on the lookout for somebody who may be taking advantage of their parents so that they can skim money off of their parents' accounts. It's a really serious thing. And so when I first saw that video, I thought, my God, he may very well try and go after this poor woman's bank account, but to my knowledge, that hasn't happened, and so I, I'm starting to think more and more that it was just Chile having a misunderstanding of how a power of attorney works. Right, and like Artie, a child understanding, like just taking it too literally. Right, and and Artie did a good job of explaining this with a historical case or a, a case in Ohio that talked about the historical nature of the terms attorney at law and attorney in fact. Right, and that the two things are distinctly separate. So. I think Chili is just conflating those terms. Which one is he? Neither. Neither. Right. Oh, that's right. He's got to take the bar first. That'll only take about, about a week or two. Well, I'll tell you, it took me, it, I think it costs like $1,000 at least to sign up for it. And you have to do that four or five months in advance. So he has some planning to do if that is his goal. I just got it. I've already taken uh, Chili's transparency officer class, and I'm looking forward <laughs> to popping people and putting them in trains. Oh, you won't be I a popper. I mean buses. Oh, that's right. You won't be a you won't be a popper, huh? Yeah. Which other? Which other I want to be the other guy. What's the other guy do? He's a slasher or what is he? A clapper? I don't forget. <laughs> what does he do? I don't know. Smacker, slapper. I don't know. <laughs> I think he begs the person to stop. 
that bus must be huge. Did you see all the rooms he had for people? He had a decompress. He had a decompression room. He had a he had a he had a rubber room. He had a consultation room. He had a spa. He had a. <laughs> Was this the transparency bus we're talking about? I'm sorry, I'm going in yeah. with uh, yeah. Archangel. Yeah, yeah the bus. Oh, you, have, you have a, a room you can beat things up if you're on like. Some, on <laughs> if you're drugs. crazy. Yeah, what was it on uh, PCP? If you're on PCP, yeah, uh, there's a room to like beat things up. How are they yeah. gonna get them in the room if they're on PCP? <laughs> they had How's a, that gonna um, happen? Because what they're gonna beat up is your transparency yeah. officers, and then nobody's getting them in the bus. And they continue to rampage and hurt people. Why and if, you, rooms, if you're really good, they got a Starbucks. A really popular thing a couple years ago. <laughs> but what? Weren't rage rooms where you can go and like smash a watermelon oh, yeah. with a sledgehammer yeah, yeah. a really popular yeah. thing a couple of years ago? <laughs> there are studies that show that that only increases violent tendencies over time. So uh, well, maybe yeah. they're old studies. I remember reading them. <laughs> so you're saying that's not an initiative. Decade ago. No. I mean, Chili probably thinks so, but look how he turned out. A very violent person. So I, obviously doesn't know what he's talking about. Speaking of uh, Chili and his. his um, uh, violence, which leads to wrestling. I know I've talked about this. I don't know if you guys have brought it up. His whole like, oh, I was a wrestling champion. Uh, I won yeah, titles, but also didn't want win uh, titles. I he I cannot find any titles he won. However, I did discover that he qualified for the Junior Olympics as a wrestler. So I will put out that out there. I can send you the article. He qualified. Yeah, he was great. good enough to do that. I, to my knowledge, I cannot find a single record of him ever winning a title though. Well, it's a, it's a old thing. Just be honest. I mean, there's no doubt that he's accomplished some things, sure. you know, and just be really? honest about what you've done. Just be honest about what you've done, what you've accomplished. Don't lie to people just to, you know, to try to push a narrative. It's just bullshit, you know? Yeah. Like he doesn't he's need to exaggerate. I mean, 10 restraining, 10, 10 restraining orders is, is a hell of an accomplishment, you know? That's just, yeah. Yeah. Own he it. He was in an episode of A Thousand Ways to Die. He was? <laughs> yep. <laughs> I got a prediction. Let's see. The, the Junior Olympics. Did I say Special Olympics? The Junior no, Olympics. No, you said right. Junior. Okay, said good. Junior. Oh, I was like, wait, no, don't run that. That's not the story. I'm sorry. <laughs> flip, flip. Junior Olympics. So my prediction is this. Let's see. He's anybody that seems to have a dealing with uh with Chile either comes out of it with uh with either restraining restraining orders on Chile or lawsuits from chili so i'm gonna josh i'm gonna go ahead if he's listening i don't know if he is or not but i'm gonna go ahead and say you might be on one of the you might get both of those i don't know uh we've seen him fall out josh fall out with with good buddies before and when money gets involved oh god yeah i could see a i could see a, a lawsuit in, in josh's future yeah but with that guys i gotta get out of here uh i got some stuff i gotta do but yes, actually, I was just it. about to say the same thing. Unfortunately, I gotta go <laughs> pick my kid up, so I'm just just realized what the time was and shut my uh, camera off to try to make a phone call. But uh, so I'm gonna end the stream. Thanks, guys, for coming on. Appreciate right. it. Thanks for everyone who's joined us. Thank you for anyone <laughs> who has Thanks. contributed. Always appreciate it, you guys. We'll be back soon with more chili bullshit, and uh, have a good night. Good have night. a good night. <laughs>